Hey traders, Ragi here, and in this free recap video, we're going to talk about a trade that we took based upon the oil report, oil inventories report this morning. And this is a video, or this is actually a trade that I shared in the premium video for members last night. So about 7, 8 p.m. Uh, when I'm imagining, you know, various members would sit down, watch the video. This is when we talked about the 30 minute chart of the CLU. So we moved on to September contract. That's where the open interest is at. So follow the open interest. And the plan was this. We had a choppy market here. And we always want to look at where are we in front of an event? Like where are we in this case in front of 1030 AM Eastern when the volatility is going to hit? So first of all, how much volatility is going to hit. In fact, you could do this for the next crude oil inventories report. So let me give you let me give you the uh, numbers that you're looking for. This is known as the hourly price movement range. Okay? And for crude, it's 52 cents, 67 cents, and 84 cents. Now that's the hourly price movement range for the 10 to 11 o'clock hour block. This is Eastern, okay? And of course, 1030 is when the crude oil inventories numbers come out on Wednesdays. So we know that for that candle or for the, the price range that would plot between 10 and 11 a.m., that's how much I should expect. But I also know because of the 1030 event, most of this price action we're talking about here, most of this is going to occur pretty much at 1030. Right? If the market's waiting on a number, most of it's going to plot then. So I'll take a look at what the market was trading around before the event and know that most of that volatility, those, those moves that I just showed you, are going to happen pretty much from 1030 to 1035. You're going to get that wick, and that's exactly what we got. Now, in the setup, last night we talked about a 66. In fact, this is right from the notes last night. We talked about a 66.55 entry with a 66.30 or a 66.15 stop loss. Now, the choice of stop here for those traders that are, that are members, they know that when there's a massive event happening, they're going to crunch those numbers. They're going to subtract these numbers to get what we call a projected low. And the accuracy of these projected lows will blow you away. If there's a cheat in the market, if there's something that I've ever wanted to hold close to the vest and never share, and that's not the way I usually am. I've been giving away my indicators for my entire career, but if there's ever been something that I did not want to share, in fact, my first words to the gentleman who showed me this, I said, how much do I have to pay you to never show this to anybody? I mean, I knew what they had done. It was amazing. So there's a huge degree of accuracy of understanding. There's a natural rhythm to the markets and you can apply that. And that's how we took this trade. So uh, subsequently, we got 55 filled. But let me ask you, if you knew that the typical price movement range could take you anywhere from, call it 50 to 85 cents, and the market went down to 66.29, and you knew that's within this price movement, are you freaking out? And the reason I ask that is most traders abandon their trading plan when they freak out. And freaking out is usually a result of not having any parameters for what kind of volatility, unexpected volatility. It's even worse if you didn't think about the 1030 hot zone. But if you don't have any parameters for the kind of volatility that could kick off with it, it's going to be very difficult to follow your trading plan and find what we call those catch the wick. Literally, catch the wick. It's not catching a knife. It's catching a wick, which is an oversold buy. All right. So next time you have crude oil inventories, whether the market's trending or choppy, think about those figures that I just gave you. Think about where you might be able to see a sell-off of that, of that many cents, of that many you know, ticks. And then if that level can land at a support zone, can you take that trade? All right, this is one of the ways that we're looking at crude short term. This was the one we took subsequent to that wick. It's been a very nice move to the upside for us. And in the meanwhile, we'll look for more opportunities to get long crude. I'm not bearish on this narrative, gang. I really am not. I know there's a lot of supply pressure 
on crude right now, but I'm going to be continuing to look for opportunities. Yesterday we had options expiration and I warned the members. I said, look, I'm not going to short this, but I know there's nothing for us to do yet. Let's wait for the buy. And today it was it. So that's how we set that up. I hope that's helped. Write those numbers down. They're going to be helpful for you the next time we have the inventories reaction. And remember, make sure you look at the API numbers on Tuesday after the close, because that's the play against the EIA numbers on Wednesday. See you in the next update.